Look at that, colonizing for the motherland. Chop that tree, sir. You chop that tree good. For Emperor and Empire! Hello and welcome back to more Europa. So where we should be at now is we should be very not very far from colonizing all of Greenland. Since the colony there is almost self sufficient. Hopefully grabbing that or colonizing all of Greenland. Well sort of at least extend our colonial range. Hopefully. Also, no, I think it was like some bug or something, but I noticed that in the editing, this all just like popped. This was all like unseen, and then it just all of a sudden appeared. It's like I should have explored it, but I don't know. Because it was all unseen waters, and then suddenly I saw it. Just don't know what happened there, but might have been a graphical glitch or something. Almost there. But as we can see, we can see look. We actually now we've actually seen the coast of South America. We can actually click on the provinces and see them. And we can see that Spain or or at this time Castile and Portugal haven't grabbed them. I think soon Castile will form with Spain. I'm surprised it hasn't became Spain yet. It normally does. But we can see them inland territories. Oh, that, that, I think they actually jumped up quite a bit now. That was a big jump. Oh, here we go. We're now seeing mainland North America. But hopefully, grabbing this province will increase our range. Hopefully. But finally, Peter. Peter Tudor, finally following in the footsteps of, uh, as, I, as I presume, his father's, he's um, now exploring the mainland. He's exploring the coast of America, the Caribbean, the central, the south, the north. He's doing it pretty quickly as well because we've got that speed cranked up. Native uprisings. Another battle won. So as, you, as I think I mentioned before, the natives get pretty easily stamped out when they're attacking, I think, a larger army which is technologically superior than them. And I think soon as, that, soon as we colonise that, we'll um, also... Get like one base tax and a few other benefits. So the Abnaki, our first native, well actually no that isn't really our first Native Americans, our first ones are the Arawak. That was our first South Americans. That was our first North Americans. If we explore a little bit higher in Central America, or you can see a border there. I don't think that's the Aztecs, can't remember who that is, but... Got all the Central Americans there. Almost there. We'll get some benefits and then we'll be able to start colonising these because it'll be adjacent. And since this won't become an independent colony, it will sort of become one of our territories. It um, hopefully should boost colony range. Friendship with the natives. Our colonists have managed to reach out 
to the natives and arrive at an understanding with them. This understanding has allowed our colony greater scope for growth without the natives getting upset. Ah, they lose one. They finally lose one ferocity and aggressiveness. After, I just need about a handful more settlers, and it's done. There we go. It just becomes self-sustaining. It lost ferocity and aggressiveness right at the. Oh. But da da, we can go bop, bop. I still have one colonist to spare. And yep, I've got a colonial range boost. I can now grab northern territories in America. I think even if these colonies become... If this even... If, like, if it becomes a can colony, like Canada. Then I think I still get a colonial range boost. Colonize Sikumut. Where is that one? I pray even probably botch that pronunciation as well by the way I'll need to type that in ah so it's that province well we'll grab that then What will be the rewards? Oh, clone your enthusiasm. <laughs> hey, can't say no to that. And when that's done, I have to. I've sort of. I have to hope that's not going to get raised. The aggressiveness and the ferocity is incredibly low. That's usually the lowest you can get. Well, you can have like a one and one with aggressiveness and ferocity, but. I'm going to have to split this army. So one goes there. And the other goes there. But here we go. East Greenland. Our first fully colonised province. Now self-sufficient. And Sikumut. Or Sikumut. I've, I'm not even going to pronounce that because I'm butchering it. That's going to be our first inland, although I preferably would rather to have grabbed, say, this one, it would have been done quicker, but nonetheless, these ones have got less ferocity, and it's better because I can't drop in troops, yeah, that's the least, but one in one. I think I'll split this army in half, and I'll drop... The other half here. So I'm defending all of the provinces that I'm colonising. Ah, oh, look at this. So beautiful. All this right planned. It's virgin soil. Ready, it's ready for the taking. I don't know how hard this is going to hit our economy. I'm currently suffering from no colonial maintenance, but that's because I haven't colonised them yet. As soon as these turn black. They're pretty, my colonial... This might be bad as well, because I'm going to be colonising four provinces at once. About Esmanian Greenland. Now I'm expecting my colonial maintenance to just blow up. Bright side now, though. My fleet hasn't got to go away back to the British Isles to um, dock. Oh, some nice manpower there. I think I'll keep working my way on exploration. Yeah, our economy's taking a hit now. Yay! Clown your enthusiasm. Ah! Now we're losing money. 
and it's going to take a while for these to colonize. Luckily, we have accumulated a lot of money, but now we're going to be losing it. But there we go. Our first province. Oh, well, technically it's not ours yet, but it's our first hold. And look at 105 plus a year. So we could get probably, I'd say about, so we could have about 100 plus settlers arrive at the colony. It's looking promising. Don't think this one's bad because we've also got that one bon benefit of one base tax, I think. Oh, it doesn't feel like it. Morocco took a bunch of its territory back. Well, so much for Portugal trying to form something colonial there. Realistically, I should have probably grabbed something there. Because then I could have just cock blocked Castile and Portugal from going inland and in north, but. All fairness, I don't know if the game will last this long. Because within no time of starting it, the new expansion was announced in the, in the, in the dev diaries we were talking about, you know, the um, sort of. The patch, the free update that's going to come with it. So it's got 187. That one has 94. That's 119. So I think when the colony, when the colony gets more settlers over time, its percentage chance of um, getting more increases. Because that one's a 25, 24, 24. And this one's a 25 because it's got 221. So I think if it gets that new set the chance, I think it I think or it can should have a chance of say getting like a hundred something colonists arriving. Look at that, colonizing for the motherland. Chop that tree, sir. You chop that tree good. For Emperor and Empire! Although we're not actually sort of an empire yet. Yet. How's my economy? Could be worse. Negative one and a half isn't too bad. I've had it worse with colonialism. I've had it worse with colonial tax. But as soon as Peter, not Peter, I am forgetting who's who now. No. Jacob, there we go, he's finally done. Did I also call Peter Tudor? I think I meant Jacob Tudor. What? You still went. B okay. Well, I want you to quickly head here, Mr. Jacob, because I need to split this army in half. I think I'll send Peter here. Oh, the province is renamed to Nain. I think that's a one little nice little touch of this game. Is um, depending who colonizes, I think a province, its name can change. Say Bermuda. That's it's called sort of Bermuda because it's even today still an overseas British territory. I think so if like Spain colonise it, it'd be like Bermudez or something like that. It, the name sort of changes to sort of accustom itself to its owner. 
which I think is quite a nice touch. Oh, it's just kicked off. There we go. I'll drop these lads off in nine. Much easier to pronounce. <laughs> it's probably going to kick off as well. Actually, it might not, but... Whoa, what's this? The, oh, I think it's to do with the Holy Roman Empire. I don't know if it bothers me, but... The Emperor has enacted an Imperial reform. Because we're not part of the HRE, so that's not going to bother us too much. Ah, oh, look at it. It's so beautiful, all this colonialism. Um, right, where can we go to next? Any more North American explorer? No, the next one is these ones. The Atlantic South America coast. We'll go there. Not going to circumvent the globe because I'll probably lose these ships, and that's 39 ships. To be honest, I should probably be building more ships, but... I'll do that when my empire grows a bit more and I get more income. So that's going to be the sort of thing with this colonialism. That's what I was mentioning before, that sort of pros and cons to say colonising and sort of conquering. Oh. There we go, this time it was much faster. There is one frosty in down here. I'm gonna change the aggressiveness, but you know, yeah, we'll get that. Oh, I think we get cannons now finally. I think. I might be being stupid. Okay, we're working on cannons, but battlefield-wise, it's not ready yet. I think, as I was saying, with colonialism, it's a bit rough at first, because then, if you ain't got a good income, then you're going to start suffering from that early colonial tax. Okay. That sort of so. If, so right now we're suffering from colonial tax because we're currently colonising four provinces at once. But that should change. Say when we're colonising four provinces, we shouldn't take a hit when we've got say all of these territories colonised and we're getting a win come from them because then that's going to increase our base tax as more and more territories we colonise. That sort of thing, like. You can still it can still drain your manpower because then you've got to transport troops across overseas and they suffer from attrition now. And obviously natives rise up and you take a few casualties, but So sort of sort of comparing colonialism to aggressive sort of war and expansion that way. New trade good fur. Another battle kicking off. So as we see, I think we lost about maybe a few men now. It went from three regiments to 2.9. And we also got trading in fur somewhere. In West Greenland, which has 400 settlers. Nearly 300 there. 300 there. Damn, that's quick. Welp. I'll go into next month. Yep, more fur. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. This was this episode of Europa Universalis 4. As you can see, we've f practically fully got our grip on 
Greenland and Native Rise will get stamped out. Even if they attack the settlement and killed a bunch of settlers, we've got enough people there that if it gets attacked, the colony will survive. But look at that, our first foothold in America. Or in the Americas rather, depending on how you look at it. But look at this. The Tudor families it's, it's, it's go, it's gone far in life. Thanks to them, we've got our footholds in the Americas. And uh, we're only going to continue from going on from now. But, hope you enjoyed. And see you next time. Bye-bye.